the 234th anniversary of the Boston Tea Party. Supporters of Ron Paul for president donned their revolutionary tri-cornered hats, hoisted the Don't Tread on Me flag, and demanded an, ed an end to the warfare welfare state and a restoration of our personal freedoms. They raised a record-breaking $6 million for Congressman Paul on that day on the strength of his message of peace, limited government, personal liberty, and sound money. And on that day, the modern-day Tea Party movement was born. The Tea Party was at the front of the wave that swept Republicans into Congress in the 2010 elections. Yet for the dozens who claim to stand with the Tea Party, we can count the true believers on one hand. They are a group of Republicans who rejected Speaker John Boehner's toothless anti-war, anti-Libya war resolution in favor of Congressman Dennis Kucinich's substantive re uh, resolution. They rejected the Patriot Act and President Obama's expansion of President Bush's surveillance state. And they rejected permitting the government to borrow more money whenever it wants to. They've shown themselves to stand with the Tea Party, not by casting symbolic votes, like those on repealing Obamacare and in favor of cut, cap, and balance, both measures with no chance of passing, but by casting substantive votes against the imminent expansions of the government. The narrative that the Tea Party is a purely racist movement forged in the aftermath of Barack Obama's election to the presidency is simply untrue. But that narrative, narrative was hoisted on you, my protester friends, in order to facilitate President Obama's deception. You see, without demonizing a prominent scapegoat like the Tea Party, the president's complicity in the Wall Street Washington complex against which you are now protesting would be very clear. And just as the Tea Party was co-opted by mainstream Republicans, so too is your protest movement being co-opted by mainstream liberals, by labor union bosses, who through lucrative pensions have aggravated the budget deficits which threaten the programs you cherish, and by other democratic special interest groups who tell you they oppose war and crony capitalism, but support a president who has engaged and supported ruthlessly in both of these things. In 2009, President Obama met secretly in the White House with leaders of the pharmaceutical industry. It was much like the 2001 meeting Vice President Cheney held secretly with leaders of the energy industry. Both were egregious examples of crony capitalism, but only the latter drew your ire. Even though at President Obama's meeting, you should know this, he agreed to lock in a planned doubling of the price of pharmaceuticals in the next decade. Many of you, my protester friends, believe the president's health care reform law pushed back against big health companies. In reality, it simply formalized the crony capitalist relationship between the health care industry and the federal government, and at the same time, stole your freedoms. And so here you are, a month into a protest of what you've called Liberty Park and Wall Street, and also around the country. And already those who have been manipulating you your entire political lives are attempting to do so again injecting their narrow demands into your largely principled stands. So what should your demands be? I'll tell you. But first I want to tell you this. I support wholeheartedly your right to protest against the government. It is one of our inalienable rights, and its exercise keeps our republic vibrant. Thomas Jefferson, in fact, said that every generation needs a revolution because it is a, quote, medicine necessary for the sound health of the government you have a similar chance to live up to Jefferson's prescription. Here are my suggestions for your demands. This will unite the left and the right among you and stop the feds from using your tax dollars to kill people and to pick winners and losers. One, end the fed. Two, end the wars. Three, end the income tax. The president's class warfare nonsense is made to divide you. You are not poor because 10% are rich, you are poor because the federal government has taken up all the oxygen of success in the room. You are poor because of decades of federal mismanagement that has laid ruin to our economic system. Capitalism didn't make you poor, the lack of capitalism did. Your inability to pursue your entrepreneurial dreams unmolested by the government is the crime the government has committed against you. I don't know if these demands or any of them will be met just because you are occupying Liberty Park. Maybe in 2012, those principal Republicans I told you about who voted against the war and against the expansion of the government and against the bailouts will be joined by equally as principled Democrats and independents and young people such as you who can work together to reclaim the American Republic 
from the Wall Street, Washington oligarchy you are protesting against. When you go home, and one day you will, think about it. It's worth a try. From New York, defending freedom, everybody's freedom, every night of the week. So long, America.